Oh yeah, I recently made a maxi dress out of this fabric and I made it sleeveless. A lot of people have asked me how I did the binding around the armholes and the neckline. So I thought I'd just do a quick video on how to make your own binding and bind your armholes because it just it neatens it all up and you don't lose the shape of the arms by hemming it. So I thought I'd quickly show you, I don't know how quick it's going to be, but I thought I would quickly show you how I do my binding. Again, it's, it's not, you know, it's my way, it works. I don't know if it's the proper way. All I know is that it works for me and I'm going to stick with it. So it's up to you whether or not you follow suit or if, you know, you want to find your own way. But a lot of people have asked me how I do it. So here is how I do it. And I, lot, I do a lot of winging it, if I'm honest. I wing everything. I know that's not uh, good. It can be seen as naughty, but I'm a little bit of a rebel when it comes to sewing. So I had my scrap fabric um, that I had left over from my garment. This is the Deer and Doe Sirocco jumpsuit play suit. I did the play suit version, so it's shorts and hemmed the legs. And now I'm coming to finish the armholes. Got my fabric, my leftover fabric. So I just need to create some strips. I've already done that, but I'm going to talk you through it. I've got a trusty little ruler, which is two inches by 18. It's the perfect size for my arms. Perfect. So what I do is I just chuck this on my fabric and I cut the whole way around and that gives me my strip. Before I figured that my ruler was the perfect size for my armholes, what I would do, get a measuring tape and I would just measure around my armhole just to, you know, make sure I've got enough of my strip. You can make the strip a little bit longer just so you've got enough fabric to go right around the armhole. That makes it a lot easier for those that are not sure how much fabric they need. I will show you how to join them up once you get your strips and you apply it to your armhole. So I've got my strip ready. What I've done, I folded it wrong sides together in half long ways. I've clipped it just so that it's easier for me to manage when I'm actually popping it on. What you want to do then is you get your armhole I normally start under the arm because it's a lot easier to hide any little mistakes or any little lumps that you've got. It's just a lot easier to hide it under the arm rather than at the top of the arm. So we, what you want to do is just pop your bind in raw edge to raw edge and just clip it along. Make sure you go a little bit over your seam and I'll show you later how we join that up. Just go right the way around, pinning it as you go or clipping it. I find clips a lot easier. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to get my end and go into, pop, just pop that. I don't know if you can see that. There's my armhole. I'm going to pop it and just butt it up against this. Just place that together sorry my hands are a little bit not working today i get that sometimes they have a bit of a have a bit of a wobble and they don't work for me i'm going to pop a pin in there actually just to keep that secure it's kind of similar to a, popping a neck band in a, you know a top so i've got my binding like that i'm going to pop that right the way around the sleeve, the sleeve, my armhole, and I'm gonna just give it a little bit of a stretch just so that the the armhole and the binding do match up and I'm going to just pin that in place, clip it in place, it's up to you whether or not you want to use pins or clips. I find the clips a lot quicker and a lot easier, a lot less fiddly. So there we go, I'm just gonna Pop them raw edges together. There we go. So that is all 
pins in place around there. Now that that is all joined at the raw edges, that's ready to sew. So what I'm going to do before I sew it, I'm going to join the two edges of the binding together. So I'm going to pop this clip here. So what I want to do is, I just want to sew this, my two edges of my binding. There you go, pop it together like that. And you're literally just doing a really tiny seam along there, just so they're joined. I'm going to do that quickly now. And it'll just sit flush. Again, it doesn't have to be mega, mega neat because it's going to be under your arm. Just going to snip them off. So that's my binding joined together. You can snip off the edges if you want to, just so you've got less bulk. I'm not too bothered because this is for me. Then what I'm going to do is... You can see binding is attached, raw edges all the way around my armhole. My armhole, the binding on the armhole has been joined. It's just basically one big circle. Then what you're going to do is just attach it. So you're going to sew. Again, start with under the arm. And I normally just do a normal... Three eighths of an inch seam, just to so the just to the edge of the foot. I don't know if you can see that. Do that. I'm just going to literally sew right the way round. Taking my clips out as I go. Now it's up to you, you can use a normal stretch stitch if your machine does have one. If your machine doesn't have a stretch stitch, that's fine. You can use a normal zigzag stitch. Any stitch that will allow it to stretch will be fine. You do not need, but need an overlocker. You can do this on a normal machine. So don't go thinking you can't do it with a normal machine, you can. I'm not stretching any fabric as I'm going. I am literally feeding the fabric through as it is. Because I don't want to overstretch it. Otherwise, you'll end up with gaping armholes. So you literally want to just feed it through. My machine has got a built-in walking foot. So it feeds from the top and the bottom. If you are going to sew with jersey, I do recommend getting a walking foot because it you will find that it's a lot easier for you. Again, you don't need one, but you will find that it's a little bit tricky without one. This part is up to you. You can go along and trim. You can go along and trim just to neaten it up. I don't bother. And then what you're going to do is now you've attached your, your binding. What you're going to do is flip it over and under. So I'm going to start at the seam under the arm. So there it is. I'm just going to flip it under so it encloses your seam and your raw edges but you don't lose the size of the arm 
just going to go and clip that. So go right the way round. Clip in. I don't trim the insides. I find that it gives the armholes a little bit of extra weight, a little bit of thickness. I like the look. It's up to you whether or not you want to trim it so you've got less bulk. I like the look and I like the feel. And then what you're going to do once that is all pinned in place is just top stitch all the way around the right side of the armhole and there is your enclosed bound armhole. <laughs> I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to go and stitch these. Again, start at the underarm so that you've got a chance to get everything nice and neat. And again, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to sew this one with a little bit of a more, more wider seam allowance just so that it catches the very, very, very end. So I'm just going to go about that. You can just go by eye. That's what I do. It doesn't have to be a certain measurement. I just go by eye. And again, don't stretch anything. Just feed it through. Just go along with it. Just make sure nothing's jammed. my threads there we go okay so there we have a finished bound armhole so everything is neat and clean looking it's not gaping because I didn't stretch it and it's got a nice little thickness to it so it feels like a band and that is how I do my binding so I'm going to go over now and just do the other one <laughs> 